Cooperatives. You've maybe heard the word before, but what exactly are co-ops? They're not part of government, they're not charities, and they're not regular business corporations. So what are they? Well, co-ops are legally recognized groups that offer another way to organize people and activities to achieve common goals. Co-ops are person-centered, and they're able to consider more than just the bottom line. Community is at their heart. That's what sets them apart. They're guided by seven internationally accepted principles that value self-help, democracy, equality, and community. Housing co-ops also follow the international principles, but homes are central to people's lives, their families, and well-being. What sets housing co-ops apart? Most people in BC either own their homes or they rent their housing from someone else, a private landlord, governmental organization, or a housing society. Housing co-ops offer a different way to live and offer unique benefits, but they aren't as well understood as other housing options. You can find housing co-ops across the province, but they're concentrated in the Lower Mainland and on Southern Vancouver Island. There are two main kinds, nonprofit co-ops, which are the most common, and equity co-ops. There are more than 260 nonprofit housing co-ops in all, with more than 15,000 homes. We'll focus on the nonprofits. Co-op buildings come in all shapes and sizes. Co-op complexes range from a handful of homes to several hundred. There can be townhomes and apartments, family-oriented projects, and others that are geared to seniors. Most co-ops house mixed age and mixed income communities. Co-ops welcome everyone. All the housing co-ops in BC share some things in common. Co-ops are independent organizations. They aren't owned by the government or private landlords. They're not public housing. Members aren't renters. They own their homes together and pay housing charges, not rent. Unlike renters, members who live in co-ops have a say in how their housing is run. Because they're nonprofits, they operate at cost, which makes them more affordable over time. They also offer security of tenure. Members can stay as long as the co-op meets their needs and they follow the rules that they agree to together. Most importantly to many, Co-ops are communities, where members know and support each other. They're also part of a bigger community of co-ops, locally, nationally, and internationally. Not everyone will find co-ops a perfect fit, but many members wouldn't live anywhere else. Maybe the biggest downside to co-ops is that there aren't enough of them to meet the demand. But we're working on that. Housing co-ops, old and new, find support from a number of organizations. Many co-ops have or have had relationships with government. But the main bodies that represent housing co-ops are the Cooperative Housing Federation of British Columbia and the Cooperative Housing Federation of Canada, which work together. CHF BC and CHF Canada are also co-ops, and they provide advice, planning assistance, education, advocacy, and group buying options to their members. These sector organizations are independent and they aren't funded by government. Members choose to join, and CHFBC is proud to count more than 90% of nonprofit housing co ops in BC as members. To learn more about housing co ops in BC or about CHFBC, visit our website at chf.bc.ca.